Hey guys, it's Logan. Welcome to another video. And this video is going to mark the start of a series of computer science videos for Game Maker that I will be releasing. So in this video, we're going to be talking about variables, memory, and um, data types. I've got to get my pencil here. So we're going to talk about variables, memory, data types. Boom. And my art skills are not on point, and I'm not doing this because I want to be an artist or I want a cool video. I just feel like I'll be able to explain a little bit better with drawings than I will a PowerPoint. So I'm going to try to hurry up quick in this video. Um, I recorded it last time. It was 30 minutes. I'm going to try to hit 15, so I'm going to leave out quite a bit of information. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is how is memory stored in our computer? Well... If you think of memory and you're thinking of RAM, yes, I'm referencing like how much RAM you have. Uh, this references how many bits that your memory can hold. Uh, so you have gigabytes, so you have four gigabytes. And if you Google how many bits four gigabytes is, it's a ton. And that's what it means is it's, uh, that's counting how many bits your RAM can hold. And a bit is a one or a zero, okay? So a bit, that's it. It's either a one or a zero. When you see a binary string like one zero uh, one zero 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 one, that is um, a string of bits. Okay, and this string could actually mean if you're doing an integer, it could mean. And I'll do a, a video on binary and how to read binary and stuff like that if y'all want. But this would be 128 plus 32, which is what 160 uh, plus 1. So this is actually 161 in a numeric value. Okay, so how does your RAM organize these bits? How does our operating system organize these uh, string of bits? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to erase that. So a bit is a 1 or a 0. And your computer is just a huge string of these bits, okay? And we can imagine this as boxes, okay? And, or one large box. This is, uh, let's say this is a section of your RAM. It keeps going on forever. I can't draw how big it would be. And instead of breaking this up by being like a one, a zero, a one, zero, like this, that would be pretty um, hard to do with millions of bits, right? Uh, you would have to change each bit individually. And the way we get around doing this is in memory, we store eight bits into one section of memory. So we call these partitions. So we have eight bits here. I'm going to go ahead. I didn't leave much space, but imagine there's eight bits. Uh, one, zero, 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 zero. That's eight. One, zero, one, one, zero, 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 zero. And then uh, let's give us two more spaces. One, zero, 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 one, 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 one. I don't know. I think that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So now we have sectioned off pieces of eight bits. We call these bytes. Okay. So this is one byte. And this is one byte. This is one byte. This is one byte. And this is one byte. And each of these boxes, you can think of these as boxes, has an address. So we can label this as 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. All right, so now we have these individual boxes. How do we use data? How do we store data inside of these boxes? Well, there's things called data types, and we have primitive data types that we use. And in GameMaker, uh, GameMaker automatically kind of does all the memory stuff for us. We just kind of assign a variable like a health, health equals 100, right? That's all we do. But under the surface, what's happening? Well, it's not definitive on how GameMaker stores or uh, manages the different data types. So I'm going to give you a general overview, like if you're using Java or uh, some other programming language. Okay, so what happens is health is an integer. In Java, you'd actually have to say int health equals 100 or uh, C++ or C, any of these, you'd have to say int health equals 100. This says, hey, I want to locate enough space for an integer, and I want to set that space to represent the number 100. So an integer, we'll say, is four bytes. It takes up four bytes to represent an integer. Well, why? Well, because if you only have eight bytes, you can only go up to, I don't know the exact number, it's around uh, 256, I think, actually. Um, I believe that's right. You can only represent up to the number 256 in eight bits. But you add on eight more bits, and you can represent a much larger number. And then let's say uh, you want a very large number, you could use uh, four bytes, right? So you would use this space to store uh, an integer, okay? 
all four of these spaces would get turned into a number that would represent 100, okay? And 100 only takes a few numbers, let's say in this area, to represent that. So let's say only a few numbers, let's say this represents 100. Well, what happens is just the other boxes get set to 0, 0, 0, 0. They're, you know, they're just set to empty because they don't hold any values. And I'll go over how binary represents numbers if you'd like in a different video. But now we've used up these four sections of memory just on our integer, okay? And four bytes of memory. And that's because an integer uh, by standard, kind of the standard amount that it takes up is four bytes. And what if you were doing a Boolean? Well, a Boolean is true or false, right? Well, a Boolean only needs one byte. That's because uh, it can be represented by just a one or a zero. Uh, I don't know if I did enough. So that could be true. Even true could be uh, multiple ones in the thing, as long as it's not all zeros. All zeros means false, so eight zeros equals false. Now we could just store this as one bit, but as I said, our memory is partitioned into eight bit sections. There's no one bit section in our memory that we can just put uh, a Boolean in. So a Boolean, we'll say uh, one byte for a Boolean, okay? So the different data types that we actually have in uh, programming, uh, there's quite a few primitive data types, um, but let's say we have integers, uh, doubles, which are um, actually doubles, floats, and longs. Well, I'll just group them all together for now. Decimal places, they can hold, a, some can hold larger values of numbers because they take up more memory than the other one. That's why there's three. Uh, well, there's actually more. And then there's shorts, and then there's ints, which are, uh, you know, anything without a decimal place is an integer. And that can be represented by, you know, the four bytes. And then there's also um, Booleans that we just went over, which is true or false or one or zero, one or zero. Um, then we have characters, which are pretty important. Characters can be represented by, it depends on the language or the encoding type, but we'll say two bytes. I believe GameMaker uses the Unicode encoding, which uses four bytes for a character, but it's not important. Um, a character is just a individual like C or any, there's a ton of different ones that you can use. If you're using two bytes, shoot, I don't know the maximum amount you could have, but you could have quite a few. That represents like one letter. You have your entire alphabet in there, um, maybe like the different digits or um, there's all kinds of stuff that are in the characters. But yeah, those are basics. And there's also, you might be wondering, what about a string? I use strings a lot. Well, funny thing, a string is not one of these primitive data types. What makes the data type primitive is that it can directly, uh, be broken down into these zeros or ones without uh, any like really extra work. That data type stands for a certain amount of memory. Well, a string is actually an object. So a string is basically an object that holds all kinds of different data types, okay? So when you make a string, let's say uh, name equals Logan, okay? That's our string that I'm creating. Then what this is actually doing is in memory, it's creating an array of characters. So we're creating an array of uh, one, five, <laughs> my name is five characters long, equals L-O-G-A-N. And remember, a character can take uh, two to four bytes a piece. So each of these is going to be stored in memory in two byte sections. So uh, let's just do our L and uh, my O for an example. So these two bytes would get found in memory. They're free to be used. And this would store um, the L. And then these two bytes would get found and they would store the O. And usually for arrays, it tries to find a contiguous block. So it's trying to find what if this memory was being used by a program or by our program already. And then it would try to find this space. And let's say this one's used. It would try to find this space, but maybe it doesn't want that. Our memory management might look for a space that could have our L, our O, our G, our G, our A, and an N all in a sequence in our memory. And that's very common. So our, we in our string, this is our string. Sorry, I kind of got off tangent we store our character array of five characters, right? And this takes up, we already talked about, if it's two bytes per character, it's gonna take up 10 bytes, okay? And now let's say we have, um, well, what else does our string hold? Sorry, kind of got off. Um, well, in GameMaker, or I don't know exactly all the variables that our string holds, but it definitely holds a integer value for length. So it holds a length integer value, which is set to five in this case. So the length is how many characters uh, long our array is. So now we have to store that integer, which is another four bytes, into our memory. 
It also contains, um, oh shoot, I kind of broke down in my brain, but uh, just <laughs> trust that it contains quite a few different variables. So a string is actually an object that contains uh, more data. It contains a sequence of primitive types. That's why it itself is not a primitive type is because it's housing all these uh, primitive types. So when we want to access how many characters are in our string, then that's when it returns our length value. And that's why a string is an example of a data type that is not a primitive data type. Okay, so let's talk about GameMaker specific. GameMaker assigns the data types for our values automatically, right? So you just write health equals 100. You don't have to worry about assigning it as an integer uh, to make sure that a certain amount of space is allocated in our memory or assigning it as a double to make sure more space is allocated or actually it depends, but let's say more space is allocated in the memory. So you don't have to worry about uh, this stuff really in GameMaker. It's done for you. You just write your health equals 100. Well, I've tried to get some information about how data types are used in GameMaker or stored. And in the documentation, it says, it always uses a 32-bit float. So that means that basically any data type you use in GameMaker is going to be stored as a float, even a decimal point value. So in GameMaker, a 2 is equal to 2.0. In GameMaker, a true, I believe, is just equal to 1, which is equal to 1.0. So even Boolean values are going to be doubles inside of GameMaker. So we don't have a control over uh, that. That means we can't even use integers. Everything's going to be kind of the same. And uh, some information I've got just from emailing uh, Yo-Yo Games, and it doesn't sound definitive, so uh, don't... Don't assume it's true just because it came from Yo-Yo Games. Uh, the information I got kind of sounded like he was like uh, just someone trying to get info for me from the developers. I, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, I was told uh, that basically every type in GameMaker is stored as a 16-byte structure. So we can assume that we don't have any control over our data types. 16 bytes is quite a bit compared to, you know, the four bytes that uh, Java needs for an integer. We'd have to use 16. The advantage that this has to us, once again, is being able to reassign variables. So in uh, something like Java, you would do int health equals uh, 100. Now, what happens if you want to assign something else to health? Let's say you wanted to change health later on to equal uh, true for some reason. You know, this wouldn't work because remember a Boolean value takes up one byte and integer value takes up four bytes. You can, I, I think you can cast from uh, an int to a Boolean. I, I'm sure there's a way, but um, in general, this would probably give you an error, okay? You could not do this, but in GameMaker, you don't even think about it. You're like, oh yeah, my health equals uh, 100. I'll say H for now equals 100. But for some reason, I want to make this true now. Well, since all these data types take up the same amount of space, this can happen. This isn't a big deal, we could do this. In addition, we can store multiple types in our array. So in Java, once again, let's say you wanted to make an array of uh, health <laughs> for some reason. Uh, I'm gonna erase this with my finger. So let's say you wanted to make an array uh, called health. Well, you could only store integers in this array, okay? So what I mean is you'd have to do health zero equals 100. Now you couldn't do this. One equals 100.0. You could not do this because this is a double, which might take more space or actually it could be a float or anything, but uh, it could take more space than this integer. And I'm not saying this is Java specific that this is gonna throw you an error. There's some stuff you could do between doubles and floats that, or doubles and integers that work. But in general, this could return an error because these are two different data types. You couldn't store these in the same type of array, okay? But in GameMaker, we can do something like health equals a string and then health equals a integer and then health equals a double. All right, we could do this in GameMaker. This, because all these are the same type of 16 byte structure. I'm just saying it's 16 byte. I'm not saying this is definitive. Remember, this is just uh, kind of the best information I've got. And if you have better information, please leave it in the comments. So that is exactly why we can do this stuff is because everything represents the same kind of data type. And I'm sure uh, behind the surface, GameMaker breaks it down and does things with it. But initially we can just do whatever we want inside of these different data types. So we don't ever have to worry about this. This is a really cool feature in GameMaker, but at the same time, it doesn't allow us to be memory efficient. So 
what if we don't want to use 16 bytes just to store an integer? Well, too bad. We have to use that 16 bytes. And if we make a huge array, uh, it's going to eat up our memory much faster than if we were using uh, a strongly typed language like Java or C++. And again, uh, each one of these spaces in memory is one byte. I'm going to kind of summarize everything really quickly. I'm about done. So I'm going to go over exactly what happens once more when you assign a variable. So let's say we need, we're going to assign an integer, and we're going to go back to say it's four bytes, okay? So let's assign an int me equals 20, okay? This gets broken down into binary. Since it's an integer, it gets stored in four bytes. These four bytes are found free in memory. And then it stores the value 20 in here in ones and zeros in binary representation, these four blocks. And then it assigns that address space to me. So now anytime we reference me, so let's say we're doing a u equals me, then what happens is it's assigning the value of me into u, and it's going to this address space of me. So me is like, oh, I got to find the address. I know where it's at. It finds, you know, usually the first instance of the address, and since it knows that it's an integer, it knows how many spaces forward it needs to go to get the full value without going over and getting an extra value on accident in the memory. So it grabs uh, these four spaces, brings it down, and assigns it to you. And now somewhere else in memory, it stores that same information, okay? We, it, it actually makes a copy of this information over in uh, another four spaces of memory, okay? We'll say this is four spaces of memory over here. And this is you, and this is me. Now we have a copy of each other. Um, we don't really have a way to reference, like in uh, C++, you could actually use pointers and you can make two variables point to the same address space. So, it's, uh, so you and me could just both point to this. And if I changed the U value, it essentially changed the me value as well. But we don't have control over that. Basically, it just makes a copy somewhere else in memory. And then we have two separate uh, equal values. Now if I change the value of u, it changes it over here, but it doesn't affect the original value of me. So this is how memory kind of works in the computer, and I hope this made some sense. If you're still completely confused, I will remake the video. I will explain it better. Let me know what you need more explanation on. I want to make these videos to help you better understand what's going on so you can make more effective programs. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.